to everyone. My purpose in life is to make people a better version of themselves. As a kid, um, when I was a child, I was fascinated by people. I absolutely loved people. I loved watching people, loved people watching, loved interacting with people. I remember when my mom would go shopping, she would take me along. And while she was in the store looking for things, I was often at the window staring outside, watching people, what they were doing, how they were talking to each other, how they were interacting with themselves. In classes and in school, it was the same as well. Now, I've got a very big extended family. And in my family, there are people who are quite successful and also people who are not. I've got lawyers, I've got doctors, politicians, governors. I've also got people who are at the very low of the barrel, people who are scraping for life, who had goals, intentions, and things they're set, but they couldn't admit it. And I remember as a child, I often wondered why this was the case. Why are some people better than others? What is it that makes some people more successful than others? My obsession with being better and being the best comes from my childhood. So my father is a highly educated man. And oftentimes, he will talk to my sister, talk to me about being better, reaching into our potential, being the best. And I'll come back from school. My dad will ask, Mercy, how was your day? Tell me, what happened today? And I think a lot of you can probably relate to that. You come back from school, your parents will ask you, what happened today? Tell me about today. Did you make any friends? But for my dad, it was quite different. My dad would ask me, Mercy, what did you do today that made you better? What did you do today that made you better than who you were yesterday? Tell me something you did today that made you tap into your potential. And a lot of the time, if I don't have answers to this question, my dad would sit me down, talk to me, that, and tell me I can't afford to waste my life. I needed to be better. I needed to be better than the person I was yesterday, and I needed to be better than the person I am today, and also better than the person sitting next to me. I didn't quite understand this. As a child, I was quite angry because I couldn't understand my dad's obsession with being better, being the best, which is potential. I couldn't understand what it meant. My family moved to Canada, and suddenly, I was thrown in a class in a school of 1,000 plus students, and I was the only black female. What this meant was that I was different. I stood out. People noticed me entirely because of the color of my skin. I was different, I was unique, I was new, and that came out. And I knew that I didn't want that to be the reason why I was standing out. I didn't just want to be noticed for the way I looked like, for the color of my skin. I wanted to be noticed for my potential, for the things I could do, for my abilities and the things I was doing. I wanted to be different, I wanted to be better. So I was saying yes, I was doing a lot of things, I was saying yes to opportunities, conferences, events, I was leading and doing so many things in school. I wanted to be different. I wanted to differentiate myself from the person other than me. And in the midst of all of this, I would often see other people who had quite potential, but they weren't tapping into it. Someone in my class with the best voice that could articulate their words so well, but they would be the most quietest person in the room. Someone with design skills who could write well, during group projects, the person will be the one volunteering to talk. So for me, I couldn't quite understand why this was the case. Was it that they weren't seeing what I was seeing? Was it that they didn't know they had potential? Was it that no one was talking to them about how to tap and reach into that? So of course, it made perfect sense that I would go to university and study psychology. Now, psychology is a much less creepier version of people watching and understanding about people. I spent years learning about people. What makes people people? What makes us us? What interests us? What motivates us? What gets us to do what we do? And also, most importantly for me anyways, 
What stops us from doing what we could be doing? Now, there are many reasons, there are many factors that stops us from doing what we could be doing. But the number one reason I came up with is distraction. We are distracted. Oftentimes, we've got so many things going on for us. We're competing with work, with school, your family, yourself, your mind, your heart. So many things are competing for your attention and your time and your energy is often split in different ways. And because of that, we're not performing at peak efficiency and definitely not at 100%. Now, I was quite in, I'm, I'm quite interested in people and I often wondered why this was the case. So, I took to social media and I asked a simple question. Why do you think you're not performing at 100%? So I, this is a survey I did on social media, so definitely not scientifically accurate. But the answers and the, um, the results were interesting and I thought I would share it today. I asked people, why do you think you're performing at 100%? Yes or no? Interesting enough, 9% of the people who responded to my survey said yes. And a whopping 91% said no. 91% of the people who responded to my survey think they are not performing at 100%. So to me, I was like, yes, this is great. I've, I, you know, I've already thought, I've always thought about this. I've always thought people were not performing well. But even though the numbers are great, I wasn't interested in the numbers or the percentage. I was more interested in the why. So I went back to the people who responded back to me, who answered my survey, and I asked them, why do you think you're not performing at peak efficiency? What is the reason why? And a lot of them came back with things like, well, I know I'm not, or people have told me I could be doing better, or I somehow perceive in my mind that something could be doing better. A lot of it came down to perception. So then I was like, well, it's natural as human beings. If we've got a problem, we should want to solve it. If you know you're not performing at 100%, why aren't you fixing that? Why aren't you changing it? I asked the people who responded to my survey this question, and a lot of them said things like, I've got a lot to do, or too many things on my plates right now, or I'm not even quite sure what 100% looks like. I'm not quite sure what that means. So I sat down, I thought about it, and I came up with three different reasons why we're not performing at 100%. The first, excuses. We make so many excuses. Whether consciously, whether unconsciously, we are constantly making excuses. Second reason, we are not setting intention. So in your head, I want you to imagine a hamster on a wheel, constantly going, no intention of when to start, when to stop, when to take a break, just keeps going on the wheel. As human beings, we're not performing at 100%, we're not setting intention. Not setting intention for current action, definitely not for the future actions. The third reason why we're not performing at 100% is that we're stuck in a bubble. So I'm currently stuck on this red carpet right now. This is my bubble. A lot of us are stuck in an imaginary bubble. We're not going beyond that. We're not reaching limits. We're not pushing the boundaries. And that absolutely drives me crazy. Why? Now, performing at 100% does not mean we're robots. No, do not get me wrong. Being, performing at peak efficiency does not mean that you've got every single plan of your life figured out, no. It does not mean you are a robot, basically. Being 100% is what it means to be truly human. Being 100% means you're absolutely confident in yourself and also in your abilities. It means that when I'm asking the question, do you think you're performing at 100%, without a doubt, without hesitating, you're able to answer yes. Now, if you're gonna take anything away from what I'm talking about today, this is what I want you to take away. To reach 100% and to reach peak efficiency, you need to be able to find your purpose in life. I'm gonna say that again. 
To reach 100% and to reach peak efficiency, you need to be able to find your purpose in life. When you find your purpose in life, it helps you to minimize distractions. It helps you to focus your time, to focus your energy on the things that actually truly matter, both to you and also to your surrounding. When I started this talk, I said my purpose in life is to make people a better version of themselves. For me, that's my one core value. And I think having figured out my purpose in life, it actually makes life a little more fun and very easy as well. If I've got two decisions and I'm weighing, weighing different options, and I'm not quite sure what to answer to a question or to a decision, I relate it back to my purpose. Does it make other people better versions of themselves? And if the answer to that is no, then it's easy. I don't spend my time and energy on things that do not relate to my purpose in life. So what I want us to do to, in order to be the better future, you need to find your purpose in life. What is it that will help you to build a better future for us as human beings? I think we, as the human race, we've got so much potential. My God, we have so much potential. And if every single person in this room is able to tap into themselves, find potential, find that 100%, whatever that means to you, then I think the human race is unstoppable and the future is filled with endless possibilities. Thank you.